tonight. No turning back. Israel's Netanyahu vows to fight on against Hamas despite global condemnation, with the humanitarian crisis in the region continuing to worsen. Putin's power. With Russia gearing up for the presidential elections, President Putin remains the strong choice for victory, the leader also giving a warning to the West with nuclear warfare. TikTok troubles. The US House of Representatives passed the TikTok bill, cracking down on the social media app, posing the largest threat to the platform since Trump's administration. And flight friends. Scared of boarding a flight? Well, guess who's here to lend a paw? All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ala Verna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Hello and welcome to World News Tonight. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's almost the end of the week and we continue to bring you some comprehensive updates on key global stories. Well, without any delays, let's get right on to it. As we have done the past few weeks with the Israel-Palestine conflict. Well, despite the global decrying of the war in Gaza, Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu insists on pressing on with his military campaign in the region. This comes as British Foreign Secretary David Cameron calls for a maritime aid corridor. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to finish the job in Rafah. Speaking at a pro-Israeli conference in Washington, he added that Israel would take steps to secure the safety of civilians. Netanyahu faces increasing international pressure from world leaders who are starting to criticize his military campaign in Gaza. Meanwhile, strikes across Gaza killed at least 10 people overnight, according to local Wafa news agency. About a quarter of Gaza's population is currently on the brink of starvation. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron said that the United Kingdom was doing what it could to bring aid into Gaza. He called on Israel to open the port of Ashdod to allow a maritime corridor of aid into Gaza. The U.S. Air Force have also announced another airdrop of aid into Gaza, including 16 bundles of food. The U.N. have said Gaza is in desperate need of aid and have called on Israel to allow UN workers visas in order to distribute supplies. Now, despite all the claims on lacking ammunition, Ukraine continues to further the conflict as it pounded targets in Russia with dozens of drones and rockets during the crucial times leading up to the nation's elections. The video showed fire and smoke at two fuel facilities in the West, and Russian officials also reported a separate fire at a major refinery. Moscow says it downed over two dozen drones in all. For more on this situation, we have our venerable new special correspondent Simashi Pereira from Moscow in Russia. Simashi? Here's Anuradi. Ukraine-backed army proxy group said that launched a cross-border raid. The fighters purport to be Russians who opposed the Kremlin. One group called Freedom of Russia Legion posted a footage it said showed its fighters inside Russia. Russia denied that groups had penetrated its territory, but said the borders had come under attack in several places. Ukraine said that the proxy groups were acting independently, but the timing of raids carried out day before a presidential election in Russia were widely seen as backed by Kiev. Russia said it beaten the army attacked back. The strike could add up to the problems for Russian President Vladimir Putin ahead of this week's vote. Back to you, Anuradi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than the world news special correspondent Simashi Pereira from Moscow in Russia. Meanwhile, Russia's President Vladimir Putin refuses to keep silent about the matter and says Russia is technically ready for nuclear war. While speaking ahead of the presidential elections which kick off tomorrow, Putin added that the nuclear war scenario was not rushing up and he saw no need for the use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine. 
In the warning to the West, which came on Wednesday, he added that if the US sent troops to Ukraine or Russian territory, it would be deemed as a significant escalation of the conflict. Here's Putin speaking to state media, Russia won, just days before elections, which are sure to hand him another six years in power. Firstly, from the technical point of view, of course we are ready. They are consistently combat ready. Secondly, and this is accepted by everybody, our nuclear triad is more modern than any other triad. Actually, only us and Americans have a triad, and we have advanced much more than them. Our triad and the whole nuclear element is more modern. Putin's nuclear warning came alongside another offer for talks on Ukraine as part of a new post-Cold War demarcation of European security. The US, however, says Putin is not ready for serious talks on the conflict. Putin has made several public nuclear warnings to the US aimed at discouraging greater involvement in Ukraine, a move the Kremlin says would mark a slide into world war. Despite Washington claiming it has seen no major changes to Russia's nuclear position, the remarks have certainly caused concern in the US capital. The West continues to grapple with how to support Kyiv against Russia, which now controls almost a fifth of Ukrainian territory. Kyiv says it's defending itself against an imperial-style war of conquest, designed to erase its national identity, whereas Russia says the areas it controls in Ukraine now belong to Russia. Putin sent tens of thousands of troops into Ukraine in February 2022, triggering full-scale war after eight years of conflict in eastern Ukraine between Ukrainian forces on one side and pro-Russian Ukrainians and Russian proxies on the other. Now, over in neighboring India, thousands of protesting farmers gathered in the Indian capital as they escalated their campaign, demanding higher crop prices just weeks before a national election is to be called. The farmers, most of whom belonging to the northern state of Punjab, gathered in what was a largely sit-down rally at New Delhi's iconic Ramilla grounds. The farmers gathered to attend Kisan Mazdur Mahapanchayat, the Samyutya Kisan Morka or the SKM, an umbrella body of 37 farm unions, which gave the call for the Mahapanchayat, got a no objection certificate for the gathering from the Delhi Police and Municipal Corporation. The Delhi Police has allowed farmers to hold the Mahapanchayat with the condition of gathering no more exceeding 5,000 people, no tractor trolleys, and no march at the Ramilla Maidan. Delhi police officers said they had asked SKM to restrict the number of participants to 5,000 but expect more than 15,000 people to attend it. On its part, the SKM said more than 30,000 farmers from Punjab are expected to reach the national capital. The police have also issued a traffic advisory for the commuters to avoid roads leading to central Delhi. India is seeing a bit of trouble externally as well. The Maldives said China will provide it with military assistance in the latest sign that the Indian Ocean Archipelago's pro-China shift is well underway following the election of President Mohamed Mirzu last year. The Maldivian Defence Ministry said it signed an agreement with Beijing on China's provision of military assistance and that the deal would foster stronger bilateral ties. Details of what the assistance would entail were not released, but the ministry said the deal was gratis or given for free. The move was part of a push by President Mirzu since taking office in November to develop closer relations with China following his India Out election campaign that promised to remove Indian troops from Maldivian soil and reassert lost national sovereignty. Let's go for a short commercial break. Stay tuned for updates from the US and much more. We'll be right back. And on the road to the White House, Biden and Trump continue to trade jabs against each other's campaigns as they officially face off in their election rematch. It remains to be seen exactly who will pull ahead as polling shows a close tie. I'm here to announce the first of its kind investment, $3.3 billion, $3.3 billion in 132 projects in 42 states going to help right historic wrongs. U.S. President Joe Biden visited the political battleground state of Wisconsin on Wednesday to tout his administration's investments in communities and the creation of jobs across the country. 
after he and his Republican rival Donald Trump both officially won their party's presidential nomination, setting up a rematch of the 2020 election. In Milwaukee, Biden promoted his signature achievements, including infrastructure and inflation reduction legislation, while criticizing his opponent's economic policies. My predecessor talked about infrastructure week for four years. He didn't get a single thing done, not one. After Tuesday's primary contests in four states, Biden and Trump both secured enough delegates to formally become the presumptive nominees. This one got us over the top. In a video celebrating the nomination posted on social media, Trump called Biden the worst president in U.S. history and declared, quote, the nation is failing. We're going to turn it around. We're going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to close our borders. We're going to do things like nobody's ever seen before. And we're going to make our nation's economy be the best ever in the world. Voters have expressed little enthusiasm for a repeat of the bitter 2020 election, with polls showing both Biden and Trump are unpopular with the majority of voters. Trump's myriad criminal charges could harm his standing among suburban and well-educated voters whose support he has historically struggled to garner. Meanwhile, Biden has been dogged by the perception among a majority of voters that he is too old to serve a second four-year term, though allies believe his fiery State of the Union address may serve to counter that notion. Biden's visit to Wisconsin is part of a month-long blitz aimed at rallying supporters in each of the seven battleground states that could decide the 2024 election. Biden won Wisconsin in 2020 by less than 1% of votes. In 2016, the state supported Trump over Hillary Clinton. And now on to Trump's legal troubles. It could be partially seen as a victory for Trump's legal team as the judge in Donald Trump's Georgia election subversion trial dismissed three criminal counts against the former U.S. president while letting the overall case proceed. According to a court filing, Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee said that prosecutors' allegations that Trump and three co-defendants pressed state officials to violate their oaths were not detailed enough to sustain those charges. Two of the six charges McAfee dismissed relate to a January 2021 phone call when Trump pressed Georgia's top election official Brad Raffensperger to, quote, find a precise number of votes to reverse his defeat in the state. The judge did leave 35 other criminal counts intact, including 10 against Trump. McAfee said prosecutors could seek a new, more detailed indictment on the dismissed counts. Trump and his co-defendants have pleaded not guilty to charges that they formed a criminal conspiracy as part of an effort to overturn Trump's loss to Joe Biden in Georgia in the 2020 election. In a statement, Trump's lead lawyer in the Georgia case, Steve Sato, agreed with the judge's decision to reduce the number of charges against his client. He also said, quote, the entire prosecution of President Trump is political, constitutes election interference, and should be dismissed. A spokesperson for the office of Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who brought the case, said prosecutors are reviewing the ruling and declined further comment. McAfee's ruling came as he prepares to issue a highly anticipated decision on whether Willis should be disqualified over a romantic relationship with a lawyer she hired to run the prosecution. Trump's legal team has argued that Willis benefited financially from the relationship and may have lied to the court, allegations Willis denies. The Georgia criminal case is one of four criminal cases facing the Republican who is once again challenging Democratic President Joe Biden in the November U.S. election. Now still in the U.S., the greatest threat to TikTok since the Trump administration, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill cracking down on the short video app that would give its Chinese owner ByteDance about six months to divest the U.S. assets of the app or face a ban. American lawmakers from both parties have raised alarms that through the Chinese-based parent company ByteDance, the Chinese government could gain access to the personal data of more than 170 million American users. The vote comes a little over a week since the bill was proposed, and after action in Congress had stalled for more than a year. Ahead of Wednesday's vote, Beijing accused Washington of bullying. Democratic and Republican lawmakers said their offices had received large volumes of calls from TikTok users who opposed the legislation. 
with the volume of complaints at times exceeding the number of calls seeking a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. And last month, President Joe Biden's re-election campaign joined TikTok. But last week, Biden said he would sign the bill if it came across his desk. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said on Tuesday the goal was ending Chinese ownership, not banning TikTok. Do we want TikTok as a platform to be owned by an American company or owned by China? Do we want the data from TikTok, children's data, adults' data, to be going, uh, to be staying here in America or going to China? That is the fundamental question at issue here. The bill faces a more uncertain path in the U.S. Senate, where some senators favor a different approach to regulating foreign-owned apps that could pose security concerns. And a more legal update, the EU has set a global president by being the first to officially pass a law regulating artificial intelligence. The European Parliament overwhelmingly in favor of the act, with 523 votes for, 46 against and 49 abstentions. The EU began drafting AI regulations back in 2018 and the first draft was released in 2021. The pioneering act aims to ensure transparency and minimize the risks of AI use. For more on this story, we have other than the World News Special Correspondent Panchali Ratnasekara from Helsinki in Finland. Panchali? Yes, Anuradi. The EU has faced hurdles including concerns of potential competitive disadvantages facing European companies. Nevertheless, a consensus was reached in December last year, recognizing the critical need to curb the risk of AI abuse by tech firms. Set to go into effect by the end of the year, the law categorizes the application of AI into four risk levels. Minimal, limited, high and acceptable. Where there are limited risks, such as which chatbots, specific transparency obligations will need to be met. Technology related to healthcare and education, such as robot assisted surgery, falls into the high risk category and government approval must be secured before deployment and human oversight must be ensured during use. Unacceptable use of AI due to extreme risk, including public facing biometric system and predictive policing will be banned. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Panchali Ratnasekara from Helsinki in Finland. Well, an unlikely partnership was briefly formed today between Taiwan and China. Taiwan dispatched Coast Guard boats to join a rescue mission at China's request after a fishing vessel capsized near the Taiwan-controlled Kinmen Islands amid heightened tensions in the sensitive Taiwan Strait. Taiwan joined China on a rescue mission on Thursday after a fishing boat capsized near the Taiwan-controlled Kinmen Island. China requested Taiwan's help amid heightened tension in the sensitive Taiwan Strait. China claims democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory, despite strong objections from the island. China has also stepped up military activities near it in recent years, with almost daily breaches into air defense identification zones. Authorities on both sides sent rescue boats after a Chinese fishing boat capsized just over one nautical mile west of Taiwan's Dongding Island, Taiwan's Coast Guard said. Taiwan's Kinmen Defense Command said it had not received any request from Chinese authorities to search the island, but that any survivors found would be handed to the Coast Guard. Last month, China's Coast Guard began regular patrols around the Kinmen Islands close to its coast, after two Chinese nationals died while trying to flee Taiwan's Coast Guard after their boat entered prohibited waters. Last week, Taiwan's top China policy-making body urged its giant neighbor not to change the status quo around the waters there by sending Coast Guard boats into restricted areas, saying tension should be controllable. Let's go for a short commercial break. You're watching World News. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 
there are those of us who find flying very enjoying and then there are those who simply can't shake their nerves about being in an airplane well for those nervous ones tonight five therapy dogs have been roaming the corridors of istanbul airport for the past month searching for stressed passengers who are looking to calm their nerves before they board their next flight passengers can interact as they wish with the dogs as they walk around the airport with their trainers according to the project heads traveling can be very stressful and for this reason they have approved the therapy dog project according to research interaction between animals and humans reduces stress levels and anxiety considerably one dog kuki walks around the airport stopping frequently as passengers come up to pet him as he immediately rolls on the floor to expose his belly the sign of a very good boy and finally tonight we have for you a sight that hasn't been seen in over 200 years. A grey whale was recently sighted swimming off the coast of Massachusetts with officials from an aquarium describing the event as incredibly rare. Scientists were flying 30 miles south of the Massachusetts island of Mantucket when they observed the whale feeding, diving and resurfacing repeatedly. After circling the area for about 45 minutes to capture photos, the scientists were able to identify it as a grey whale. According to the New England Aquarium, grey whales disappeared from the Atlantic Ocean by the 18th century, so this view was really quite special. I wonder when we will see more sightings of this majestic mammal. Despite its extinction status, we might see it soon since it's already in the area. Well, that's all the stories we have for you tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow with more updates on the happenings of the world. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.